Okay, so this phase of the software is going to be where we can begin to align the teeth and determine uh, the actual uh, position we want for the final result. So reading from top to bottom, the first thing we can go ahead and turn on our opposing model to see those models uh, in occlusion as we align the teeth. Hide that. We can also turn on the collisions, which is a calculation based on the proximity of teeth. It will show us a heat map, essentially, uh, with closer in get, uh, approaching the red color would be actual contact with the teeth, with the opposing tooth. So for instance, if I bring this tooth lingual, it's going to recalculate the collisions, and you'll see that it's now going to be in much higher contact with this tooth. Now if I show this, you can see why it's getting closer and closer more and more red and so if I move it one more time I'm going to move it a little more distal where I can see that it's very visibly in contact we can watch the heat map change from there if we hide this let's click over here on a, a separate tooth and we can see how red that becomes so I'm going to turn off the collisions for now one thing you may have also noticed is this number pop up this would be an IPR calculation for the intersection between these two teeth Okay, so right now we can hide that so it doesn't show or turn it back on. So sometimes that number can be distracting as you're aligning teeth, and if you just want to get things oriented and then view the IPR, uh, you can just hide all the IPR calculations. The next thing is the snap to curve. This curve right here is editable and movable. You can uh, position it wherever you want, and what's going to happen is the software is going to try to move the incisal edges of the teeth to be in line with the curve that you have uh, positioned. You can hide the curve this way and then we can snap all the teeth to the curve. Now notice there are various nodes that we can use to move this curve wherever we want. And then sometimes the curve might get hidden in a tooth and you can't quite grab a hold of it. You can always move the curve up and down if that ever happens. So if you look from the direct occlusal, we can see, okay, how do we want this curve of this arch to be? And so these are the four teeth that are going to move once we've determined the curve. We can click snap all. Now this is an approximation. It works sometimes and, work and other times it doesn't. But you can see how they fall in line. Now from there you would want to tweak position. You might want to move this tooth a little bit this way and rotate and this one, rotate it a little bit and go this way a little more. But it gets you close. That's the main goal for this, for that, ver that aspect. Sometimes it gets them almost perfect right off the bat. Okay? And so you can do your manual alignment. Keep one thing in mind that this, we call this little alignment sphere the pivot. This button right here will allow you to adjust the pivot. So the software determines an approximation for where the pivot is to the center of the tooth. And as you can see, this tooth is more skewed, and so it's lined up fairly perpendicular to the incisal edge, but because of the wear on this tooth, it's actually a bit off from the long axis of the tooth. So it does its best to approximate, but it's not always going to be perfect. So that allows us to change that a little bit, get, a, get it going a little bit more through the long axis of the tooth, we can turn that off, and now if I click Snap Tooth, that individual tooth to the curve, it's more upright in the align with uh, the long axis of the tooth. Now I can move that around a little bit because the incisal ledge is following the curve, but um, again, it's all an approximate movement. And once again, this pivot was off a little bit, so I can adjust the pivot, or I can just make the manual correction I, I want which I typically do that. I simply get it, allow the software to get it close and then I refine the movement from there. Tuck this tooth in a little bit, closing that space a bit. And in a case like this, uh, as you see that red pop up, even though the IPR isn't turned on, you'll at least see the red to show that you are in contact. Let's turn on the IPR and see where we have IPR pretty minor in most of these areas. Not too worried about that. I should ensure some cl some tight contact. But I can see that I am going to want to uh, adjust this a little bit. Um, and so, once again, we can tip teeth as well, however we want. And so this is just sort of a finesse movement, sort of a user preference. Get things to where you want them and uh, move on from there. Now, one of the cool tools that the software has is the uh, the distinction between tipping and torquing. 
Once you have the incisal edge of the, of the teeth in position, you can actually swing the entire root of the tooth um, back and forth as well. So let's hide the IPR for a moment. Let's hide the curve so we can see more distinctly. And we've got the, the incisal edges aligned, but what if we don't like the torque of a specific tooth? If we feel that this tooth, the root is out a little bit more than we would like, we can click on this tooth and change from the tip function to the torque function. The pivot now goes to the incisal edge and we can swing just the root. So from the occlusal aspect, it essentially looks the same, but we know that the root is being torqued more lingually. Now, of course, you want to be careful with that because uh, that's big movements and using aligners to accomplish that movement can be tricky. There are tricks to accomplish that more predictably, but in the long run, that does help to refine some of the movement after you've used the snap to curve uh, to get your incisal edges in position. That's one of my preferred ways of approaching things, get the incisal edges where they need to be, and then tweak the roots in the software from there. This little chart right here shows you the individual movement of each tooth in, um, in space. And you can also reset a specific tooth or reset all of the teeth. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the limits, how quickly we want tooth to move. Do we want to have patient wear a tray for an entire month, for two weeks, or one week? All this is going to do is affect the amount of movement per tray. With weekly, the, the movements will be cut in one quarter of the monthly. Bi-weekly would be one half. So if we click on bi-weekly for this, right here is the show virtual tooth. This is a, a pretty um, power user tool where you can move this and align it with the actual tooth. And if you've integrated your comb beam scan, you can actually, as you're moving the tooth, you will see the uh, root of this virtual root move within the uh, within the bone to determine if you have bone volume to accommodate the root movement you're hoping to achieve. But for now, we're going to progress and move to the next phase of the, of the module, which is to evaluate the, the various steps of treatment.